Good evening. This is Maestro Cortella with the Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today, we have a 3v3 on Ulthane Temple. Our first player is Psycho, playing as the Apothecary. This is a healing Space Marine Commander. He has a targeted heal, passive health regeneration aura, as well as later on a very powerful active heal. Next up, we have Dino playing as the Commissar Lord. This is a slightly tanky melee hero. Has a shield, although not a particularly strong one. Can also shoot his own troops and make them fight harder. Finally on the blue team, we have the Emperor of Mankind playing as the Lord General. This is a Imperial Guard support hero. Buffs Imperial Guard squads with some area of effect buffs. On the red team, we're going to start off with Cutter. Cutter is playing as the Orc Commando Knob. Sneaky, by Orc standards, can shoot things, stab things, and blow them up. Next up, we've got Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, playing as the Brother Captain of the Ordo Malleus. Tanky melee hero in Terminator armor who cannot be knocked down or suppressed. And finally, we have Rostam, 313, playing as a Force Commander with toothbrushes on his helmet. Another tanky melee hero can knock things down. It also has some area of effect buffs, excuse me. Alright then, so I know I started off back again with a 1v1, but I know a lot of you are also really into that 3v3. So here we go with a rather long 3v3 on Ulthane Temple. This is kind of the jungle version of Argent Shell. Looks like we're going to have the Ordo Malleus squaring off with the guard right here. Guardsmen are focusing down the Brother Captain, but it looks like uh, Jesus is using the uh, using that, uh, kind of using the, the Brother Captain more as a distraction there, the, really as a tank and soaking up a lot of damage, uh, and then forced off a lot of the Guardsmen with his Inquisitorial Stormtroopers. Here's a flank, though, by Dino. Uh, Dino should, at least in theory, win this engagement, certainly with the help of the Sentinel. Sentinel gonna be aggressive, though. This is this is a bold play, and I think he's lucky uh, that that Jesus is not properly focusing the Sentinel. Uh, usually the Sentinel does not want to be that aggressive. It's usually a very, very big risk uh, being that aggressive. Usually a big risk um, that usually does not have proportional reward. Meanwhile, down here, it looks like the PowerPoint was uh, attempted decap by by Psycho, did not get the full decap, but he, he did attempt it. Meanwhile over here, the Sluggas are approaching, but they're having a lot of trouble making this work. Sluggas, the other Slugger squad are going to get into melee with the Slugger boys, but it looks like Psycho is really focusing down those Sluggas. However, while he's focusing down the Sluggas, the Commando Knob is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Apothecary. The Apothecary can't possibly fight the Commando Knob in melee, now that the Commando Knob has upgraded to have the Assassin's Knife. Commander Knob also needs to be careful. His positioning is a little compromised, but he can certainly infiltrate uh, and then get out of there safely. New power node being put up here by Cutter, and it's being lightly harassed by scouts who are actually phenomenally poor at bashing generators. We have an early purchase of the Iron Halo. So this is going to make the Force Commander quite a bit tankier. Uh, and out of all the single war gear upgrades you could get in Tier 1, the Iron Halo will uh, probably make him tanky most immediately. Uh, the others being the choice of armor war gears. Haven't done the calculations for how much health he will regenerate with the Artificer armor and see if that actually equals up to the extra 500 hit points that he would get from the Iron Halo. Um, but I'm pretty sure the Iron Halo would be, be more, more tankiness out of that. Big Guardsman Blob right here. Three from the Emperor of Mankind and two from Dino for a total of five. But what Jesus Christ has right here in his favor is he's got Stormtroopers with um, grenade launchers. However, they are getting flanked by Psycho. Psycho with some tough tactical Marines, even some scouts in there, maybe doing a shotgun blast. And it looks like the Brother Captain, yeah, Brother Captain goes down. Looks like Dino's Commissar Lord also went down. Um, but this will be an easy revive for the Lord General, who's right here. Easy revive, and then he gets the experience. Should level him to two, or at least very, very close. We'll see. We'll find out right now. And looks like he just barely, just shy of level two. Meanwhile, it looks like the blue team has actually not dropped a single VP yet. Uh, Cutter attempting to change that now. It manages to get the decap. We have a one-to-one. -one. So this should be uh, the VPs finally starting to tick down in favor of the red team. We have double sluggers right here, both upgraded with burners, so they might be making a run for the power. Um, 
Looks like Psycho's moving in here. He, he does see the Slugger Boys, so he's also chasing them around um, with the with the tactical marines as well. Basically, with his entire army. Um, but those sluggers, it looks like, are also providing a distraction for the Shooter Boys who were able to complete that cap. And that means that the red team finally has a double cap and going to start getting some DPs to tick down in their favor. Looks like these double sluggers, looks like they were attempting a power run. Oh, he's going to approach right now, but that's not going to work. They're just going to get shotgun blasted away, and then there's plenty of range fire support right here between double tacks as well as the apothecary with the customized storm bolter. We had some an IED placed. Uh, did not manage to wipe that squad. Although it looks like actually maybe it did. Looks like Jesus did lose one squad. He was not too happy. Yeah, he definitely lost a squad there. Looks like he lost one squad and the other one just barely survived. He must have just with the reaction right there. Jesus, uh, not happy. Brother Captain will be revived by the Force Commander. Force Commander will definitely level two. So that's actually a very big benefit uh, to <laughs> to heroes actually dying in team games. You get that revive for another hero from uh, from another hero rather, uh, and then they just get that that huge spike in experience. It's it's almost um, I was going to say it's almost an entire level, but we did see before the Lord General. Uh, did a revive and did not get a level. So it's more like something like 60 to 75% of a level. Now, I'm actually not sure if uh, later levels actually require more experience. I really don't know, uh, in part because I've never really actually dealt with the numbers of the experience. I've always just looked at the bars. Anyway, red team pushing up to the blue team's natural and the commander mob going in hard, actually chasing down the Katachan Devils. Katachans Shotgun Blast is either on cooldown or they used Old Reliable and don't have the energy for it, so they kind of just back off. A smart play to just micro them back. These sluggers are gone. Cutter, unfortunately, he must have had his attention split or something. They, sh I feel like they just should not have been there. Yeah, he had his army in all, all sorts of places and probably just lost track of the sluggers. Ooh, Tactical Marines lose two models right here. Lucky to get out of there alive. Upgrading to the Sergeant so they won't die. Other attack squad looks like it might come close to losing a model. That's a super close call. And he does not lose any models there. Looks like the blue team is really answering back, especially with the Guardsman Blob of Doom. Five Guardsman squads right here. Individually, the damage of those Guardsman squads. Ooh, we had a Devastator Marine squad had been upgraded to advanced targeting. I'm not sure what the Sentinel was doing that far into the Devastator's firing arc. Uh, it must have been another risky play, and this time it looks like you really paid for it. Because it should not have been that close to a Devastator Marine squad, even if the Devastator didn't have advanced target. Uh, since those Vengeance rounds can actually be pretty good for focusing down Sentinels, it will actually do some light AV damage. Not that you actually need AV damage to damage a Sentinel. Scouts right here. Ooh, lost two models. Did not quite pay attention to that uh, to that scout squad, or at least just did not react fast enough. Devastator Marines also really got to go. Anyway, the Tactical Marines right here, where are the rest of the models? They're somehow split up and we're coming from the base. They're rejoining them, but going to retreat all the way back to base together. Maybe just a man got left behind from each one and the Space Marine leave no men behind. Chimera out for the Emperor of Mankind. Kind of a predictable purchase considering he got triple Guardsmen. The, the synergy there is will be extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, those Guardsmen should really never be lacking for models. Because they'll be supported by the Chimera. And if they get in trouble, they can just retreat inside the Chimera. Um, three squads, I believe, is also the maximum amount of squads that a Chimera can hold. So, yeah, the, syner the synergy there between the triple Guardsmen and the Chimera is pretty much perfect. Grenade on the tree right here. He's walking, he's going to attempt, throws it on him, almost themselves, gets two models, not bad. Anyway, it looks like the red team actually had control of this, uh, this contested VP for a while, actually lost their natural somehow. Meanwhile, the blue team is going to get the contested back. Generally, it looks like Cutter's been a little stronger here. I say this in part because the blue team has that VP lead. And winning on this map, as well as Argent, of course, the original, depends a lot on the players in this lane and who actually wins it. 
Uh, it is a team game, but if you just if you just play lane to lane, uh, basically you will be at the mercy of just the teammate who is in that lane. Plasma cannon shots going in, not knocking them down because the Lord General um, has one of his war gears. He's got the flak jacket, which reduces damage taken and also makes them immune to knockback. I think that's a very very good choice against the plasma cannon. Uh, the plasma cannon doing that huge burst damage and knockback. And especially if you are not paying attention when a Guardsman squad gets hit by a Plasma Cannon, you can lose most of the squad. Uh, if they're at partial health, you can lose the entire squad. So I think that's really the best choice. That's a fantastic choice for dealing with those Plasma Cannons. He's still little, even with it though, he should expect to lose models anytime he gets hit by uh, that. Ooh, the Inquisitorial Stormtroopers looks like they might go down. We've got a foot of Gork coming from, going on the Chimera. The Emperor of Mankind does not micro away from the foot of Gork. He needs to keep moving so that he doesn't lose the Chimera entirely. It's still taking damage. Actually goes down to 32, 31 hit points before finally getting out of there alive. Um, shouldn't actually have gotten hit by the foot of Gork, though. I mean, the foot of Gork is... It is definitely a very big area of effectability. It comes from the Weird Boy uh, when he gets the Warp Head upgrade. Warphead gives him 500 additional energy, as well as granting him the Foot of Gork ability. 500 may sound like a lot, but the Weird Boy has the largest energy pool in the game. As we can see right now, he has 1,000. Actually starts with 500. Uh, and I believe the Foot of Gork ability actually costs 500 to cast. Um, that Foot of Gork, it's pretty powerful if you can actually get it to hit. But typically, it's not easy to hit a good player with the Foot of Gork. They should be able to micro away from it most of the time. The enemy is capturing one of our strategic points. But anyway, we've got a Razorback out on the field from Psycho. Probably has the Tactical Marines inside. Nope, he's got it to run it separate, which is, that's a little strange. Uh, the Razorback, as with any transport, uh, benefits from the the complementary complementary relationship of having a range squad inside of it, uh, particularly a range squad that can repair, since they kind of protect each other. I foresee this devastating range squad being in a lot of trouble. There are so many squads right here, lucky to get out of there alive. And although in theory it could have suppressed, there was just too much damage coming out of these guards, and we've got now triple plasma guardsmen from the Emperor of Mankind, as well as a stormtrooper squad with the assault kill. In fact, we've got double stormtroopers from Dino. And a big range blob going on right here. Range fight. Purgation squad look like they don't know what they're doing. Oh, it's just one model seems to be a little out of step. Uh, the, yeah, the guardsmen retreating to the Chimera right there. Unfortunately, Dino lost one squad right there. Lost one squad and nearly lost the other squad of guardsmen. Pretty lucky to get that out of there alive. With that, whatever damage he was taking. Emperor of Mankind, meanwhile, you, utilizing this Chimera pretty well. Uh, popping the guardsmen out when he needs the highest DPS possible. Putting them inside the Chimera when they need the protection. Meanwhile, down here, it looks like... Cutter has lost the power farm that he had right here. Uh, just kind of at the mercy of, we've got a double tax. One of them has a sergeant. The other one is back here and also has a sergeant. So between two tax, um, the apothecary, that is just a lot of range DPS coming out. Could be hard for Cutter to deal with with his single squad of shooter boys. He's got a varied build. He does have the stick bombers. Grain Eye Dreadnought right here in a lot of trouble being hit by the Laz Cannon. Look at the extreme range on the Laz Cannon. That extreme range is definitely coming from the Lord General uh, with the Sniper Rifle, granting him the Fire on My Target ability. Fire on My Target, uh, increasing the range of the Lord General. Not of the Lord General. Increasing the range of his guards and squads. Does not actually increase the Lord General's range. But it can be a very, very powerful war here. And a squad of scouts just get melted because of this huge range bob. Triple Guardsmen. Triple Guardsmen, and they've all got one level. We've also got the Stormtroopers. Stormtroopers, 
These belong to Dino, so they won't benefit from fire on my target, but they already have increased range from having the assault kit. So not only do we have a huge amount of range damage, uh, we have very, very long range. Apothecary calling a grenade thrown. Looks like a bunch of scout models were lost for Psycho. Stormtrooper's going for something sneaky. Infiltrated, throwing a grenade on the Devastator. That first grenade gonna hit, do a bunch of damage, but not kill a single model. Second grade in just goes in too late. And uh, luckily for Rostam, he did react to that soon enough. We've got a Terminator Force Commander from Rostam. Usually not a terribly common upgrade since you will give up... You will give up all of the levels that the Force Commander earned from the time that he, basically from the start of the game. You will also give up the, all the war gears that you purchase, so all of those war gear purchases will be sunk. I think the only war gear that, you will give up the, the war gear and not benefit from them anymore. I think the only war gear that Rostam had was the Iron Halo. Uh, Force Commander is quite, Terminator Force Commander certainly got a lot of hit points though. He also becomes uh, immune to weapon knockback which is a nice benefit. He can also actually do decent range damage. He's actually gone for the Heavy Flamer, and it, I'm, he's probably going for a uh, Power Bash. He's definitely going for a Power Bash. We're going to see it. I could be watching more interesting things, but I want to see if he's actually going to do something here. There we go. That looks like... All right, that will ultimately kill the entire power. It probably isn't as good as it was in the past. I know there were times uh, of people complaining about the... Forest Commander and doing silly things to generator farms with the Heavy Flamer. He's still going to take up the entire power farm, uh, possibly also the node as well. He's not going to get the node, but we have a Lehman Russ called in from the Emperor of Mankind. Lehman Crus, Lehman Crus. <laughs> the Lehman Russ, a uh, very nice tank in Dawn of War 2. It is generally considered, it's, it's arguably the best tank. Um, and it's certainly the tankiest tank and generally has the best survivability because it has the best survivability That can be a case for it being the best since it tends to stay alive the longest and thus ultimately have the most long-term impact Usually not in its vanilla form though. It's definitely not the best in its vanilla form. Oh, what was that looted tank doing? Looted tank approaching a Laz Cannon Predator upgraded with extra armor as well. It really didn't have a chance there. Uh, looks like Cutter's also going to lose a squad of commandos as well. And that's really going to hurt. And he's going to lose this this line of wall banners that he put up. So Cutter looks like he looks like he certainly got hit pretty hard in this lane. Uh, Psycho's winning and consequently the blue team is still winning this game. They should be expected to win given all that. We have a plasma gun being issued to, I guess, a... Yeah, it had to be a tactical marine. The announcer voice in any given replay is always... Uh, it's one of the players on the blue team, and I believe it's whoever's in the, the top slot. So in that case, we have a space marine announcer, announcer uh, because Psycho's in that top slot. And so he'll announce things like issuing plasma gun. Uh, it'll be the, probably be the same just voiceover you'll hear if you're actually... for that player who's actually playing. When, when they were playing this game. Alright, Jesus Christ upgrading to some Psy Cannons on his Purgation, and he's got some Paladins out with uh, with the Incinerator. Pa Paladins, a powerful Terminator variant for the Grey Knights, do heavy melee damage, so they are an anti-vehicle answer. Uh, they also do have the Incinerator, so they're going to do a little bit of range damage as well. You know, things are going on right here. The Commando Knob not able to finish off the Razorback attempted, uh, especially with that rocket launcher. Meanwhile, over here, it looks like we're going to have this engagement going on. The Paladins are going to approach. Probably take, yeah, take out the Commissar Lord. Not too terribly hard. They're approaching it now, being super aggressive, but they're running into a ton of different units that counter them. We've got double Laz Cannons. We've got the Execution of Lehman Rust, which does bonus damage against the Paladins. We've got the Guardsmen. One Guardsman squad is going to die, or is it? It's not even going to die, and the Paladins are going to die in response. Unfortunately, that was a, a very ill-advised approach. And the Emperor of Mankind managed to lose models, but keep all squads alive. Uh, that's really, really big, because these squads, as long as he can keep them alive, the, re the reinforcement cost is really not that expensive. I mean, certainly you still got to pay for it, uh, and over time it will add up, but it's still very, very cheap. 
Meanwhile, Dreadnought, Grey Knight Dreadnought stands no chance at this point, being shot at by a Laz Cannon Predator as well as a Heavy Weapon Laz Cannon, getting both the Snare as well as the extremely high damage uh, of the Laz Cannon Predator. I wonder if the Purgation Squad, the Purgation Squad will probably make it out alive. Meanwhile, the Laz Cannon Predator actually looks like it's in a lot of trouble. Probably going to take rear armor hits, and it's kind of just making its position even worse. Here's the commando knob. This last cannon predator has to be done. There's no way it's going to get out of this alive. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, when you when you start to get threatened by a V, you really just need to move back, move in the direction of your base. Another foot of work right there. It doesn't go off for some reason. Uh, I don't know why that didn't go off. There's the full auto ability from the Apothecary. Uh, I believe it has been nerfed a bit in this latest version of Elite. Of course, this latest version of Elite, I believe, has been out for a while. Um, I believe it's actually been out for about probably at least a year, if not more. But yeah, the, the full auto ability from the customized Storm Bolter used to be very, honestly, ridiculous. And I believe it was nerfed to make it a little less ridiculous, while hopefully still keeping its utility. Devastator... Marines, Plasma Devastators are going to make it out of there alive. I thought that was an aggressive teleport in attempt to take him out. Finish off the tax. He's going to miss that opportunity too, or is he? No, he does finish off the tax. So at least he picks that up. But I think he definitely he definitely had an opportunity to finish off the Devastators right there. Uh, if he had just forced melee with the Terminators, that definitely would have been enough damage to finish them off. So could have gotten both squads. Managed to get one. We've got a Nemesis Vortex out from the Brother Captain. Manages to knock over the Tactical Marines. Make them laugh a little bit, but hopefully not a huge deal for them. Uh, they'll just run back maybe to the uh, relay here, which is actually part of the bunker. We don't have a Tech Marine player, um, so that's actually... No, sorry, not the bunker. That's actually part of the Chimera. That's a Chimera thing. Um, that is a change in Elite Mod. We're going to see a big shot go off from the old man. Look at how many models. Now, that's a lot of models, and yet none of them actually died. Uh, and they're reinforcing anyway. Or not, none of the squads died. Of course, certainly models died. You know, the Lehman Russ is pursuing. The Executioner Lehman Russ, it still does damage to vehicles, even though it's generally not considered an anti-vehicle upgrade. Um, and th there are reasons for that. It does plasma cannon damage, so it's going to do damage to vehicles. In fact, it will do full damage to vehicles. Uh, but the, the Executioner Lehman Russ uh, does not really have the range that a... Certainly not of a Vanquisher Lehman Russ. We've got one squad of Guardsmen, again, not going down because it's just getting reinforced. Ma Emperor of Mankind not losing any of his squads. Meanwhile, Dino, on the other hand, looks like he's coming very very nearly lost two of his squads. Allied infantry are dying. We must support them. Allied infantry. And it actually seems like the blue team is starting to... It really seems like they're just pushing the red team back. Uh, however, the red team did have the did have the contested VP. I think that might have been in part Psycho was in the middle, fighting and winning fights, and then that meant that Cutter probably took advantage of that to actually capture the contested VP. We're gonna see a rocket run right here, split, absolutely destroying the ground. Killed at least one squad, and we've got. Purgation surviving with six hit points. Lucky them. Lucky them. <laughs> Dino not happy about that. That must have been his rocket run. He doesn't have much red left. Uh, I believe he killed one squad, and I guess he almost had that one. And Jesus Christ. Probably just made a miracle happen there to uh, just to save his Purgation. But we've got the double cap going back for the blue team. They have actually never not been in... They've always been in the lead this entire game. Oh, wow. Razorback caught way out of position. Uh, and that's how you should use the commando knob. The looted tank approached from one angle. The commando knob with the rocket launcher flanked from another. And from there, the vehicle is very, very screwed. There's honestly not a whole lot that can be done um, unless the threatened vehicle starts backing up and the commando knob gets somehow tied up. Probably something like an assault marine jump would, would help there, but Psycho doesn't have assault marines. Cutter has a death roller. I've already seen it before, but anyway, what's going on right here? We've got the Land Raider Redeemer from Rostam. Land Raider Redeemer being a powerful base. It is a space marine super unit. So big. We've got plasma cannon shots going in. I actually feel that that warrior upgrade from the Lord General is huge. That flat jacket, that is saving 
at the Emperor of Mankind so much because he's not, not getting knocked down. Wow, that was a squad loss right there. I didn't even get to see, I think those were caster guns actually. Or it might have just been stormtroopers. Didn't even get to see where they what they were before they died. <gasps> Here goes an orbital bombardment. And Dino losing a bunch of things. Looks like he's in a lot of trouble now. Is this garden squad going to stay alive? Looks like the garden squad is going to stay alive. I love this follow-up from the purgation squad. Really ensuring that the guardsmen died right there. Since that was a nice big nuke. And the orbital bombardment, it certainly has some kill potential, but I do feel the orbital bombardment is a little unpredictable in in that kill potential. Um, un a little unpredictable and a little unreliable, maybe more unreliable, because obviously you're placing the beams where you want them, but and you're hoping that they run into the beams or stay in the beams. But I think kind of like where they get caught inside the beams, like probably if they get caught dead center in the beam, that's probably the maximum damage potential. If they kind of get ca caught on the outer side of it, I'm guessing there's less damage potential there. But I like the follow-up to actually shoot them. Take advantage of the fact that those brothers are pinned there. And that you can just shoot them down with something else. Shoot them or even grenades, whatever. Combo. Use it. Make a combo out of it. We're going to have a another rocket run. Oh my god. And that second rocket run does kill a squad. Miss this squad of Inquisitorial Stormtroopers, however. So Emperor of Mankind actually lost his Lehman Russ. I I missed it, but I think it was this month. Yeah, that's that's a Lehman Russ. Um, carcass, wreckage, wreckage, wreckage is the best word. And now it's quiet. We've got some new. This time we have the Grey Knight Terminators, not the Paladins, the Terminators. Uh, hopefully Jesus Christ will use this a little better than his squad of Paladins, which. I mean, they really gave their lives for the Emperor in the face of overwhelming numbers. Double cap for the red team. Uh, and they're now getting quite a bit closer to evening this game out. There is the active heal aura from the from the Apothecary, from the armor of the Apothecary. I actually feel this is an extremely powerful war gear. Uh, particularly in team games. And you just have a really... Strong, tough a Space Marine Blob, two squads of level 4 attacks, a Assault Cannon Terminator squad, and a level 5 Apothecary with the customized Storm Bolter. He's also got the improved medical equipment, which will allow him to channel that, um, that advanced healing for much, much longer, and consequently keep his army alive much, much longer. Alright, what's going to happen right now? The Grey Knight Terminator is just standing there. The The range blob from the blue team is definitely superior, at least as a range blob. So what is the red team going to do about this? Commissar Lord is charging in. A lot of stuff just retreating back to the Land Raider Redeemer. Maybe the Land Raider Redeemer needs to move up more, but here is the Terminator Force Commander. He is using the Cleansing Flame ability. And uh, is he going to retreat out of there at some point? Can he actually cancel that and retreat? He's probably going to go down here, but it's super close. He's going to go down. Here. Got the side cannons from the Purgation Squad still going in, but look at this healing. Look at how much damage these Terminators are taking, but just shrugging off because of all the healing they're getting. Here is a Foot of Gore. Can that Foot of Gore hit things in retreat? It can, but it's actually still not that powerful in retreat. Another Orbital really does not catch enough, though. Catches the Apothecary, catches the Terminator. Apothecary is still channeling. Um, the advanced healing and consequently the Terminator still did not lose a single model they took they took so much damage there I think the apothecary can be a very very powerful team's hero there and yet somehow in spite of everything the blue team did not win that engagement uh, the red team held their ground and they're also holding the they're also holding the contested VP which is strange, because I actually feel that for much of the game, Psycho actually had the better end of things in this lane. Maybe if we take a look at... Alright, Psycho's man, he's got two squads of Terminators. I almost wonder if they're losing this game. Uh, the blue team is now losing this game because Psycho has just chosen to join his teammates in the middle lane uh, rather than attack his own lane. Maybe it's time to do a lane switch. Even bring over the... Well, they could bring over the entire army to the left lane. 
but then they would also be leaving their natural open. Alright. Advanced healing being channeled again. The Grey Knight Terminators going in, going after those Space Marine Terminators. I feel like these Grey Knight Terminators are in a little bit of trouble right now. We definitely saw how the Paladins had gotten eaten alive before, and those Paladins actually had quite a bit more health. Looks like he's being a little wiser right now. Another Orbital going off! Look at that Orbital! And that, is that Orbital going to hit much? Does not actually hit that much, though. All right. He really needs to take advantage of this time to focus down the Terminators, but they're going to get the advanced healing again. Advanced healing. I think this squad of Terminators will lose a model, but this back model should not die. Um, especially if he moves it back more and even just gets the teleport. Meanwhile, Commissar Lord activates None Shall Fall. That's not quite the proper use of that ability. Uh, none Shall Fall. You need your own Guardsman squad there, and then they won't die. Commissar Lord will still die perfectly fine. And I think the Grey Knight Terminators just went down. No, they teleported out of there just barely. But they need to get the heck out of there. We have a Bane Blade. It is the Bane Blade. And I don't feel the red team does not have quite as much uh, anti-vehicle response to deal with something like a Bane Blade. You know, VPs are evened out at 1 to 1. The blue team is going to get the double cap again. Are they going to somehow just win this game? It's actually looking like the blue team is going to lose and the red team is going to win. The blue team, they need a VP really, really soon. I don't see them taking this. And I think probably what's making the blue team unable to take this is the fact that we have a super unit on this point and a super unit on this point. Is that is just a creeping barrage. But they need they need a unit on that point. And at this point, I'd say it's probably got to be the, the Terminators. And they teleport in. They teleport in. They need the decap, honestly. I mean, going for the engagement, but those Terminators, if they do not get on the point, we've got a squad of tactical marines. We need something on the point literally now. I think the threshold of when he can actually get on the VP and still not lose the game is something like 13 or 14 VPs. Who's going to... All right, Apothecary finally gets on. They have no idea how close to... He gets off! Oh, no! All right, this is either the threshold or of, of those VPs where this is the game. All right, turns out I'm actually off by several VPs because he started that capture at like 14 or 13. Um, I might be thinking of how much time it takes to capture an entire point from decap to full cap. But no. The apothecary somehow still cap. Oh no, no he's not. It's actually a single cap now for the blue team. So they committed hard to that engagement and they actually managed to... Whoa, we didn't even see it because I was focusing on just the VP capture. They took out the Land Raider Redeemer. That is huge. I mean, that might that might actually be the blue team really taking this victory from the clutches of defeat. Unless this Assault Terminator squad has anything to say about it. We need a micro from Dino. And microing that Lehman Russ away from the squad of Assault Terminators might just be what the red team needs to stay in this game. They're going to get the decap on their own VP, and the blue team doesn't have a chance to get this VP right now. I think this could be it. This is super, super close. This approach needs to somehow get these Assault Terminators off the point. I don't think they have the damage to do it. I think their best hope is if these Plasma Guardsmen can manage to kill a model on the Assault Terminators. It is such a close call, but there is a Rox. We've got a Demolisher Cannon going in. Demolisher Cannon not happening. Does not do it. That should be the win for the red team. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right, and that is the game. Hope you enjoyed the cast. Have a good night.